As the veil is growing thin and sour night grows near, we call upon the ancestors, the ones that we hold dear. They'll guide you on your journey with the knowledge you can trust. Fire, feast and celebrate, burn leaves of gold and rust. The new year is upon us, so raise your voice in song. Sing with your father's father, you've waited all year long. Dance with your mother's mother and join in ritual rhyme. We honor all the wisdom passed down through all of time. Hi lovelies and welcome to the Witch's Cookery. Tis the season of the witch. Golden leaves are falling. Mornings are chilly, misty and full on magical. And we witches are celebrating Samhain, the witch's new year. Today I'm going to take you through my Samhain celebration. Give you a couple of ideas and inspiration for your Samhain feast, rituals and spellcraft. So what's on the agenda for today? We are going to do a no cost and a very witchy forecast for the new cycle on the wheel of year completely with wild foraged nature materials I'd like to share some thoughts and ideas for ancestor veneration and we gotta do so in the most fun way with a witchy spooky adoption of elf on the shelf of course we should also do some seasonal kitchen witchery and i'm going to share an old family recipe that i have adopted to the symbolism of ingredients that very much are connected to the folklore and pagan stories around Samhain. last but not least we're going to work some cottage witchery decorating our house for the holiday but while the golden october weather lasts let's go and gather some free witchcraft materials It's a Celtic holiday and it translates as the summer's end. Nowadays, of course, it's widely observed and celebrated by much of the witchcraft community and not only Celtic pagans. And you will also hear it often titled as the Witch's New Year. So why the new year? Why is it not in December? Well, we have to look in the agricultural calendar of the Celts or the Irish Celts back in the days. They did not necessarily observe four seasons as we do. They more so split their year into two seasons. The summer, so the light half, and the winter, the dark half. And for them, Samhain marked the end of the Celtic year and the beginning of the new Wheel of Year. Now their idea was that a new day always started with nightfall. Now why is that? Actually, if you really think about it from a context of how humans grow, how plants grow, basically all the things they could observe that makes a lot of sense. The life of a seed for example starts in the earth in darkness where it then first has to grow before you can harvest anything. It's all underneath the things that you can see. Same with human life. We also start out as this tiny little seed that has to grow in a dark womb and then goes to the light when it's already more or less fully formed. I mean they, they do grow a bit more. So now you know why it marks the beginning of the year. Before sitting down to do my introspective witch's new year divination, I did need a little breather. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will already know why. And if you don't, I did destroy my camera. It was already only hanging on to one tiny wobbly wire connection. And it finally said bye bye or rather bleep and slip behind the whale to reunite with all the other electronic belongings I had destroyed in the past. Anyways, I was quite upset because I meant a lot of stress getting a new camera the same day and shelling out a buck a lot of money. But thank God for my mental health saver app that I like to use in these moments to remain calm and collected. Aura really helped me to channel the spirit of Samhain to let things go that no longer serve me. Aura is a wonderful sleep and mental health and meditation app with a ton of different 
and soundscapes, visualizations, life coaching sessions, meditations, and one of my personal favorites when I need to calm down, sleep stories. You could kind of picture it like a Spotify for mindfulness and sleep, and it also learns your preferences and will ask you what mood you're in to provide you with the most suitable auditory help. What I especially appreciate about it is that they also offer themes like parenting, stress level control, relationships, or even personal growth. Definitely an app I use at least once a day on my phone. And if you also sometimes lose your cool, could do with some guided breathing exercises, or if you have trouble falling asleep or meditating before ritual or spell work, check out the link in the description box, as I have arranged a sweet trial deal for the first 500 people clicking it. And after some mindful breaths with one of the aura experts, I was ready to dive right into the forecast for a new round on the wheel. I've already talked a bit about this idea of a magpie oracle in my Samhain retreat video, but here is the full how-to. So you just basically need little trinkets that you connect to a certain word or energy or symbolism. You can really freely choose what is fitting. As for the trinkets, think little things found on the streets or in nature, jewelry, coins, dollar store, craft items, crystals and so on. Personally, I like to meditate over each item and then I assign it a certain meaning that I will write down because my memory is not the best. As an example, my snail shell for home and retreat, a little mushroom for growth, a dried orange slice for sun, a crown for leadership, guidance and wins a acorn for new life, new beginnings, and uh, then it is time to cast. And you really can get as creative as you want. Just pick one out of the bag and take that message, kind of how you do a tarot card, rune or oracle card pool, or you can cast it onto a soft surface and try and read the picture. Or you do something like I did here and make certain sections. For the new year, I divided my table into two parts, the dark half, so winter, and the bright half being summer. So I can read this multiple ways. What topics will be most important in what half of the year? Or what do I need to plant in winter to reap during summer? Or even what do I need to let go of and what do I bring in? You then can read a single meaning of the things, or you can see how they appear in relation to each other. For example, are two items close? Are they upside down? Are they inverted? Are they pointing towards something? For example, in the winter half, they landed a snail shell, which to me means like retreating in a home, being cozy, taking it a bit slow. The mushroom for growth is pointing towards the new year, so I have to actually plant something. On the bottom of the picture lays my flower that symbolizes spiritualism. So that is kind of like the groundedness. And then when we go up from that, on top of the new year is passion, positivity, the orange slice, and it's connected and linked with that little music key that I assign to creative work. And then on the very right side, so kind of like further on in the summer, there's the coin that I connected to travel, visiting friends, which I actually have as a witchy mom, I always keep my eyes open for ideas on how to teach my crotch goblins more about the seasonal holidays and meaning of each. Here I'd like to thank the lovely Courtney from various of my online workshops for sharing this idea. Samhain is very much connected to remembering our ancestors. The whale is thin, merch dropping soon. And now that the sun has ascended to the underworld, the creatures and spirits ascend up to us into the darkness and walk our plane. Many cultures and countries around the world celebrate some sort of festivity to honor past loved ones this time of year. All Saints, All Souls, Dia de los Muertos or here in Germany where Halloween is not really a thing, we also remember the spiritual roots of the day with Allerheiligen decorating and visiting graves, baking symbolic bread. So how do you teach little ones about the cycle of life and about their ancestors? Of course, with a fun little game. And don't worry, should you not have reproduced, you can <laughs> totally do this for yourself too. You might have heard on Elf on a Shelf, the bane of existence of all parents during month of December, a tiny little fella that you place around your house in all sorts of compromising, creative situations, ensuring to cause a good amount of daily stress and mom guilt for not being quite as involved as super mom next door until Christmas Day. Well, anyway, the month of November we are doing There's a Bat in Our Flat. 
So I tried my hardest and made this little felt fella that now lives with us. And I want to preference this with I really suck at arts and crafts and I only sew by hand because to look up a tutorial and figure out my sewing machine would have cost me hours. But I was pleasantly surprised how quick I put Weenie the bed together. Three-ish episodes of Gilmore Girls and a couple of coffees later and she was born in all her spooky glory. Maybe next year I'll give her a face. I'll link you a tutorial and a free sewing pattern thingy down below. Bats are very connected to this time of year, but why you might ask? Bats, first of all, are nocturnal creatures and they usually live in caves, which gave them historically a association with the underworld and death. In fact, the fallen angel was often depicted riding on a bat, hence also the connection with vampires and the undead. Anyway, our little bat friend spooks around the house and lands on different places where the goblins can find him in the morning. Sometimes it's an old picture book, then we look at them and learn about family members that have passed in their lives. Sometimes it lands between folk tales or history books, then we learn about the ancestors of the land and their lifestyle. Sometimes it's in a drawer with heirlooms and we learn all about the original owner and the meaning it held. And sometimes, like today, it does land between my recipes and that is when we cook old family recipes. It is a wonderful way to learn more about ancestors of blood and land in a fun and exciting way. Teach the kids and yourself some history and dig a bit deeper. So what was the recipe you ask? Well, my grandma's sunken apple cake, so delicious and made from two of the season's favorite harvest items, apples and nuts. It consists of a spice dough that is guaranteed to bring some cozy warmth to your belly. The moisture of the apple that makes the texture so irresistible is complemented by roasted nuts and to top it off, a homemade salted caramel cream. The last one being my own addition because Granny had no idea what she was missing. Oh, by the way, look how my artist child has blessed me with a little surprise painting my mortar and pestle with acrylic paint. Um, I was very impressed that he didn't get anything else dirty, so I could not even get angry, but I will need to scrub this later. To make this cake a bit more symbolic for the season, I did switch things around a bit, which also led taste-wise to an unbeatable combo. I made it into an upside down apple cake and covered it with all the sweetness. Why apples? Apples are the food of immortality that are said to nourish the soul and there's so much lore around them. For example, if we look into the UK, you probably all have heard of Avalon, the island of immortality that are allegedly is lined by apple trees. In Norse mythology, the goddess Edon was the keeper of apple, which she fed the Norse god and goddesses to keep them young forever. The earth goddess Gaia gave Hera, the queen of heaven, an apple tree when she married Zeus, and that tree was kept in the garden of the Hesperids. And seeing that the apple is such a mundane item is so connected to the other world, it is not a surprise that it is also super important for all sorts of Samhain spells, folk traditions, rituals. Original Sabbat was also known as Feast of the Dead and people would leave food offerings on altars, doorsteps, on graveyards for the walking dead. And apples were buried along roadsides and paths for spirits who were lost or had no descendants to provide for them. Another custom is to eat the apple at midnight to guarantee health for the entire next year. And if you're still looking for your significant other, you might want to peel an apple in one go and then throw the peel behind you and see in what shape it will land because it will reveal the first letter of the name of your loved one. In some areas, Samhain also marks the end of the apple harvest and it's said that all the apples that are still on a tree after that date belong to the spirits, well, or the birds, you know. Another main ingredient here is nuts, because Samhain is also known as the harvest of nuts. And if you want to know more about traditional oracles using them, look up the Nutcrack Oracle in my Samhain vlog from two years ago that I linked you up above and down below. 
Oh, by the way, when making caramel sauce, it's best to not do anything. I know it is hard, especially if it violently bubbles, but that gives you really the best result with the sugar crystallization. You really just move the pan a bit from side to side occasionally and you don't stir until you put the cream in, in the end. Carefully, because that will bubble up like crazy, but keep calm and stir it in. My caramel turned out a bit pale because I have a zero chill in the face of an impending sweet treat and wanted to eat it immediately. Sprinkle some sea salt over it and you have a very fitting and most delicious sound dessert. The rest of the day we dedicated to pumpkin carving because what is sound without a traditional jack-o'-lantern or as we call them here Rübengeist. They used to be made out of turnips and light with pig's fat or lard. Being carried through the streets it was supposed to scare the evil spirits away and my son very much loves his Kürbis monster and has it guard his bedroom windows. I wish you a magical Samhain. Kevin. Kotsch Goblin.